In the Super Smash Bros. series, there are a ton of different moves, but I think my personal favorite are the spikes and meteor smashes. These send anyone who's hit by them at a brutal downward angle, which often leads to an instant death. This sharp angle mixed with the satisfying noise they make when it lands make them some of the most exciting moves in the game. My question for today, which is the best spike in Smash Ultimate? As of now, there are 120 of them in the game, and today I'm going to be ranking them all from worst to best. Now, what exactly am I going to be ranking these based off of? I'm not really that great at this game, so this is not in any way a competitive ranking. More so, which spike is the most exciting and fun to use? The perfect spike needs to look visually exciting, along with being strong enough to feel devastating to whoever's hit by it. If the spike looks boring or is incredibly weak, that'll definitely bring it down a bit. The spike should also be fairly difficult to land, as one that's too easy to hit isn't that exciting, but the spike also can't be too hard to hit where it no longer becomes fun to try and go for. So the best spikes will try to find a perfect balance of difficulty. I'll also be taking into account if a character has multiple spikes, so if they have a more hype option, then their lamer ones will be moved lower. I'll also mostly be looking at how these spikes are used for offstage kills. Some meteor smashes have uses on stage, but that's not really what this video is about. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using spikes and meteor smashes interchangeably. I don't think there's any difference between them and ultimate unlike melee, so I'll just be using both. Also, no items or final smashes, just character moves. Sorry for Pitfall Seed and Arceus fans out there. Finally, don't take this list too seriously. This is purely for fun and a lot of placements moved around several times while making this ranking, especially in the middle of the list. Also, this video will be a good excuse to finally show off some of my clips that I have saved on my Switch for probably a decade now. But anyways, with all that said, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel, but let's jump right into my ranking of all the spikes in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Alright, these first four all basically had to be at the bottom of the list, as they only hit grounded opponents. First up is Samus and Dark Samus' up tilt. As I said, the meteor hitbox is only active for opponents who are on the ground. This is unlike Captain Falcon's up tilt where that is able to hit opponents out of the sky and into the void. Visually, the moves are pretty similar, so I was surprised that these don't work like Falcons. For that, they're going to have to take last place at 120 for Samus and 119 for Dark Samus. The other two that only hit grounded opponents are Peach and Daisy's down tilt. I like this one better than Samus's because it's more fun to use on the ground and also this makes sense to not spike. So Peach's down tilt will take 118 and Daisy's will take 117. I was considering not including these four for the list since they don't really work like the other spikes, but I didn't want to get comments saying I forgot them, and also 120 spikes is a way nicer looking number than 116 now isn't it? This is also a good time to say that I won't be going super in depth with each individual spike. There are 120 of them after all, so some of them will go by pretty quickly. Anyways, let's move on to the actual spikes now. Alright, the absolute worst actual spike in the game is Pyra's up special Prominence Revolt. To demonstrate why, this is how much knockback it does against Pichu, the lightest character in the game. At 999%. This move was basically the inspiration for me to make this video at all, because I just wanted to complain about how bad it is. This is by far the most disappointing spike in the entire game because it won't ever kill. There are several other up specials that spike and kill. With a sword as strong as Pyra's, you'd think the opponent would just be super dead, but it's basically just a minor inconvenience at best. This is, without a doubt, the worst spike in the game, giving it 116. I was even considering putting it below the other four that we just mentioned, but this one does actually hit aerial opponents. Also, I'm only counting the spike hitboxes of each of these moves, so just keep that in mind, because this move is really strong on stage. Additionally, since a lot of spikes are similar to one another, I'm separating this video into tiers, so this is the start of the bottom tier. Me Swordfighter Stone Scabbard is also basically the exact same move, so it'll take number 115. Continuing on, we have Me Brawler's Side Special Onslaught. Much like Prominence Revolt, this has set knockback, but this one of course isn't as bad because it doesn't even seem like a move that would even have a super strong spike. In fact, only the penultimate hit of the grounded aversion spikes, meaning that the only way for this to ever send your opponent off stage is if you do it at the ledge. This won't ever kill, but it can put them in a somewhat bad spot. Still, this isn't really that exciting, so it'll take number 114. Similarly to the last one, Ganondorf's side special Flame Choke is another one that has set knockback and only spikes with the ground aversion. This will also only ever send the opponent off stage if done at the very ledge, so why is this one better? 1. Flame Choke is just a way more fun move to use in general, and 2. Me Brawler still does his final hit after the spike, so it makes his look 100% unintentional, while Ganondorf's just looks infinitely cooler, so he'll take number 113. Next up, we have Me Swordfighter's Down Air. Down airs are by far the most common move to spike, with 70 of the 120 spikes in the game being down airs, and good ol' me Swordfighter here definitely got the worst of them. 
If you've noticed the theme of the last few entries, then you could probably guess it's because, yeah, it has set knockback. That makes this move super lame since it'll pretty much never kill, but what puts this above the last few is because it's still kind of fun to go for. Being an aerial means that it can be used pretty much anywhere, so it can actually lead to some kills if used at the very bottom of the screen, giving it 112. Now we have the only spike I didn't know existed before making this video, that being Diddy Kong's side special monkey flip. Yeah, apparently if you grab onto the opponent and press jump, it will act as a mini spike. When I say a mini spike though, I mean it. This move won't kill until well over 250%, and at that point, why even go for it when you could just... So yeah, it's not set knockback, but it might as well be since it's just so weak, giving it 111. Corrin's down air dragon's piercing drop is another one that's just too weak. Much like Corrin himself, this move is just so boring and underwhelming. It does so little knockback that Corrin will almost always die first, which makes the move way less exciting as you basically have to use it to either tie up a game or when you're a stock ahead. Many stolen falls are exciting because they're so risky, so if you use it last stock and win with it, that's basically one of the most hype things you can do. You can't really do that with this though, since Corrin will almost always die first, so it'll take 110. I'm sure many of you were expecting Little Max to be low on the list, and for a pretty good reason. This move is incredibly weak, just like all of his other aerials. This isn't fixed knockback, so you can get a kill with it, but it's too weak for it to ever really be fun going for. You know, it's kind of a miracle that this isn't at the bottom 10, but I wouldn't call 109th place very good either. Next up is our first one that's low because it's just too hard to hit, that being Ridley's down air. I mean, just look at this hitbox. That small one there? That's the spike, and it's only present for the startup. This, alongside Ridley already having a much better spike, makes this one completely unfun to go for, placing it to 108. If any of you all have watched my videos before, you would know that I really, really dislike Rosalina, but I've had a bit of character development and made her down air not last place. It's still super lame, though. There's just no energy behind this at all, which makes it extremely boring putting it at 107. The only up smash to have a spike is King K. Rules, which is a really funny one. If you didn't know, this specific hit of the move will do a weak spike on an opponent. This won't ever really kill, but it can set up for stuff which can make this slightly more exciting than the others in this tier. While this is still practically useless, it's very funny, so I had to put it at at least 106. Moving from one DK rep to another, we have the main man himself, Donkey Kong, with his side special headbutt. Comparatively to the other spikes in this tier, this is a pretty solid one, but what moves this one down is that Donkey Kong has three other, much better spikes. This is the worst of the four since it's so weak, which makes this move way less exciting since you could have gone for literally any of the other ones. Had this been his only spike, it probably would have moved up a few spots, but as of now, it's going to take 105. And for the final Meteor Smash and bottom tier, we have Piranha Plant's Down Air Flower Pop Meteor. This is here for very similar reasons to Ridley, as it's just way too hard to hit this move to make it fun to go for. I used to try for it a bunch, and I think I may have ever seen anyone actually land the spike like two times. So for its underwhelming hitbox, it'll take number 104. Starting off the low tiers, we have probably the most controversial choice on this list. That move is Ivysaur's Down Air. Now remember, this isn't a competitive tier list, because if it was, this would be really high. The reason I'm putting this one so low is because it's just way too easy to hit. Remember, I said a move has to be at least a little difficult to land to be exciting, so this move is just super boring. Sure, it can be exciting in some very specific scenarios, but 99% of the time, Ivysaur just sits on the ledge to down air your recovery. He almost never even has to go off stage to do it either, which takes away a lot of the risk and hype of the move. That's why I'm putting it at 103, despite it being a competitively really good spike. Duck Hunt's Down Air is the first of many moves in the low tiers that are here just because they feel weird to use. It's a spike that has two hits, which means that the second hit can miss, making the opponent not even get spiked at all. The animation as well is really weird to me, and it makes this move, while not terrible, just not feel at all satisfying to use, giving it 102. Me Gunner's Down Air is just way too slow, and they have a much more exciting one anyway, so this is going to take 101. Be prepared for these middle spikes to go by very quickly, by the way. Pit and Dark Pit's down airs, the under arc slash, just feel super inconsistent. There have been so many times I swear my opponent should have been spiked, but they're sent upwards instead. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, the sour spots send upwards, so if you miss the strong hit, you'll basically be helping them rather than hurting them. Sure, this upward hit can be helpful in some combos, but this video is just focusing on spikes, and in that aspect, it makes pretty much every single one of Pit's other aerials except up air much more fun to go for off stage. 
But yeah, this move just never feels right. Maybe this is just a case of me needing to get good, but I can just never hit this. So I'm putting Pits at 100 and Dark Pits at 99 because Dark Pit is better. Inkling's down air is just a super basic bop down with her gun. That's about all I can really say on it. It's just not that exciting to me for some reason, and it also has a strange amount of end lag, so this will take number 98. Kind of similar reasoning for Palutena's down air, just really basic and uninteresting for me, so it'll take 97. We finally have our first real up special spike with me Brawler Soaring Axe Kick. This one will take you down with me Brawler if you ever get caught by it off stage. The reason this is so low though is because I just think this move hits the spike way too easily. Call me salty all you want, but this move is just super annoying and kind of unexciting. I don't think I've ever been hit by this move specifically and not been at least a little annoyed, unlike pretty much every other spike in this video. So for just being a really annoying move instead of fun, it'll take 96. Cloud's up special Klim Hazard is another spike mostly about taking your opponent down with you. Funnily enough though, I think this has the opposite problem as the other one because it's just a bit too hard to hit. I'm talking about offstage of course, because on stage Clouds will spam this move a ton and hit it constantly. But anyways, I've tried to go for this and I always just completely fail and I haven't really even seen anybody actually land this in a match. That does make hitting it slightly more exciting though, however Cloud also has two other spikes which are both infinitely more exciting than this one, so I'm going to place Klim Hazard at 95. Pilot's up special, Sword of the Creator, is a move I thought would be way more fun to go for before they came out. And the final good thing is that their uppy looks sick, and I'll be going for that every single time I play them. Guess the comments were right on this video, I should have been more patient with Violet because I would have realized that she's actually worse than I expected. Anyways, instead this spike pretty much only ever happens because someone messed up trying to edgeguard Violet. In fact, this move makes edgeguarding Violet completely unfun since you basically can't, because I swear this move will always catch you no matter what. It still can be really cool to go for in some very specific scenarios, but those are few and far between. So since most of the spikes this move lands are accidental, and Byleth has a way better spike later on, this will take number 94. Falco's side special, Falco Phantasm, is a weird one. It's a very weak spike, but it can lead to some neat stuff off stage. This itself will rarely kill, however, and Falco does have a much better spike later on, so this will take number 93, even though this one is kind of fun to go for. Funny Monkey's down special hand slap is low for the same reason his headbutt was. It's far eclipsed by his other spikes. This one is at least stronger and a little funnier than headbutt though, so it'll take number 92. Me Brawler's down special feint jump and Zero Suit Samus's down special flip jump are both pretty much the same move. The spike on both is on the weaker side, but these are both fun moves to actually use, which brought them up a bit. While these won't kill often, they're still fun to use, so feint jump will take number 91 and flip jump will take 90. On to the other Me Brawler down special, we have Head on Assault. This one is complicated because yes, this one is super funny, but it makes it to where you can't use Feint Jump, which is a super useful move to have. I just think this move limits you a bit too much to justify using it. It's still really funny though, so I have to give it at least 89. The final one in the low tier is Skulk's Down Air. This is fairly powerful and can be fun to go for. The only reason it's here is because it has two hits. Much like Duck Hunts, there are times where only the first hit will connect, meaning the opponent would be fine. This seems to happen much more than Duck Hunts as well, which is unfortunate, but this one is higher because it looks and feels much more powerful, placing it at 88. Now we begin our mid tier, which I'll be splitting off into three sections. Low mid, mid mid, and high mid. Because otherwise, this tier would be way too big. A lot of these explanations are going to be really quick during this middle section, as many of these moves are very similar. Starting off, we have Pyra's Down Air, which has a similar problem to Ivysaur's, where it feels like it's just way too easy to hit. I mean, this is basically the same motion as Pits, but this one feels like if the move even touches the opponent, they'll be sent down. I think it's still fun to go for, though, and it's not as easy as Ivysaur's, so it'll take 87. Hero's Down Air is another super basic one, which is just a stab down. On a character as crazy as Hero, this is honestly one of the most tame things you can do, which kind of makes this move seem much more on the lame side, putting it at 86. I should say though that all of these more basic ones can still be super hype, I'm just speaking relatively here. King K. Rolls Down Air is decent, but he has another incredible hype spike, which makes this move look much lamer in comparison, giving it 85. Similarly, Wolf also has a different, much more exciting spike than his Down Air. Also, I always thought the animation on this move looked kind of weird, is that just me? Anyways, this will take number 84. Marth and Girl Marth's Down Air's Downward Slash have a similar consistency problem to the Pit's Down Airs for me. I always feel like I should be hitting these moves, but they seem to always get the sour spot. These two are much better at actually spiking the opponent though, and they look way cooler as well, so Lucina's will take 83 and Marth will take 82, because lord knows, Marth needs at least one win over Lucina in this game. Lucas's down air PK foot stomp is a fun one to go for sometimes and is fairly unique. 
It's a multi-hit stomp downward, which looks funny as well. The only reason this is so low is because, like K. Rule and Wolf, Lucas has a much more hype spike, making this one slightly lamer in comparison. This is still a fun one to throw out, though, so it'll take number 81. Villager and Isabelle's down airs, downward turnips are also just super basic strikes downwards, but they're still mildly exciting, of course. There was one thing that confused me about Villagers though. For some reason, I thought this could only spike when he has three turnips, since each time you use the move, he'll randomly use one to three. But no, it actually spikes no matter how many he has. No idea why I used to think that though, maybe it was like that in Smash 4? The spikes do have different power levels depending on how many turnips you get though, but that shouldn't be an issue if you're as lucky as that one Minecraft guy. Anyways, Villagers will take 80 and Isabelle's will take 79. Zelda's down air meteor heal is another one that's kind of basic. The reason it's on the lower end, though, is because the Sour Spot also spikes, and that's really weak, which makes the move as a whole feel kind of lame. Still, though, the strong hit is very neat, giving it number 78. Me Brawler's final spike on this list is his down air. If you all didn't know, Me Brawler is the character with the most spikes in the game at a total of 5, 6 if you count their final smash, which we aren't for this video, of course. Their downer, though, is just pretty basic, but it's still fun to use, so it'll take number 77. Anyway, Diddy Kong's downer is the exact same as Me Brawler's, but Diddy Kong's is better because Monkey, so it'll take 76. Bayonetta's down smash, Stomp to Meteor, is the only down smash to actually spike. This one is a lot of fun to go for, but it's just a bit too specific in its uses, and there's a lot less risk involved in it since you won't be going off stage. I originally had this much higher, but decided to move it down to 75, since opponents could always just recover really low to the point where she could never really hit it. Charizard's down air has always felt a little bit weird to me. I don't know how to describe it, but the way that Charizard is animated here makes the move feel a lot weaker than it actually is. I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way, but that makes this move feel a lot less satisfying than some of the other stomps, so I'm placing it at 74. Luigi's down air foot spin and Falco's down air corkscrew meteor are both very similar moves, which are both angled downward stomps. I think this makes them more interesting, but at the same time not as powerful feeling. I still appreciate that they are made more unique from the other stomps though, and they're still fun to go for, so Luigi will take 73, and Falco gets 72, because Luigi is a big dork loser nerd. The last one for the lower mid tier is Olimar's down air. It's again fairly basic like Inkling and Hero, but I do like the extra spice of having different Pikmin do it each time. Still though, it's another sort of swing your weapon down spike, so it'll take 71. Onto our true mid tier, and this is where a majority of the stall and fall down airs are located. These are basically moves that will send whoever used them flying downwards, which makes them extremely risky to use off stage. They usually only have a spike hitbox at the start of the move as well, which adds some nice difficulty to landing them. It does make me throw them out a little bit less than I would like to, just because you're probably going to die if you use it, but I still think they're pretty fun. Not all of them are in this tier, but since a lot of them are pretty similar to each other, a majority of them are. Mr. Game & Watch's down air downward key is pretty much the least risky as he can almost always recover, and the spike hitbox I also feel is the most inconsistent, giving it 70. Banjo & Kazooie's down air beak buster is more risky, and it takes a little bit more skill to recover after using it, so it'll take 69. Then we have the four angled kicks, which are Min Min's down air, Sonic's down air shooting star kick, Sheik's down air slanted sheik kick, and Zero Suit Samus's down air slash dive. Since these are all pretty much the same move, they're interchangeable. They're all decently powerful with a good amount of risk as well, so I'll be ranking Min Min's at 68, Sonic's at 67, Sheik's at 66, and Zero Suit Samus' is at 65 because for some reason this one spikes for the entire duration. The others only spike at the startup of the move, so I'm not really sure why this one got special treatment. Moving from the slanted kicks, we have Ben at his down air rapidly descending meteor. This is again another stall and fall, but I like this one better than the slanted kicks because I just find the animation to look cooler. Additionally, this one has a lot less risk since Bayonetta sticks out her legs super far so she can actually spike opponents while still remaining on stage. Due to all of this, I'm going to be giving it an edge at 64. Ridley's up special is a really unique one as it's basically another stall and fall, but it also has a spike hitbox for the entire duration of the move. you think that would make it easy to land, but it actually has an incredibly long startup which I think balances it out quite nicely. The only thing stopping this from being higher is me not really being that used to it and it's an important factor in making this fun to use. If I was a Ridley main, I would probably move this up quite a few spots, but 63 is definitely a solid position when the competition is this stiff. Samus and Dark Samus' down airs feel like the perfect balance of difficulty between Pits and Pyros. This doesn't feel way too easy to land, but I've also never felt robbed out of a spike with this move, which I really appreciate. The only real criticism I have is that it does feel a slight bit too slow, but other than that, this one's a great one, so Samus' will take 62, and Dark Samus' will take 61. Now that we've made it halfway through the list, we could talk about every Smash fan's favorite thing, swords. And lots of them. 
Starting off, Cloud's down air always felt a little bit off to me. It's kind of similar to Charizard's where the animation to me just doesn't really sell the move. Luckily though, this still feels very satisfying to land, giving it 60. Ike's down air- OH GOD! Now that we're the correct Ike, his spike is very powerful, but a bit inconsistent. While I do like the power a lot, I slightly prefer the more consistent spikes of the next three slashes, so this will take number 59. Robin's down air undercut will only spike if he's using the Levin Sword. However, when he does have it, it's basically impossible to miss the pretty powerful spike. Him not always having access to it though, in addition to him also having a more exciting one later on, puts us at 58. The final sword slashes for now are Croy and Rom's down airs half moon. These are both fairly consistent and pretty strong. There's really not much more to say on these since they're both pretty solid. I'll be giving Krom's 57 since he does have another spike later on, so Roy is able to take 56. King Dedede's down air is pretty much the same motion as the sword slashes, but this time, he's got a hammer. This is slightly less consistent than some of the last few, but it's power more than makes up for it. Plus, using a hammer just makes this move feel way more satisfying to hit, giving it 55. Next, we've got ourselves two stomps, starting with Incineroar's down air. This is a pretty solid stomp, it's a bit slow, but it's not too bad. The only thing really bringing this down is the fact that he has another spike later on, so this will take 54. We Fit Trainer's down air is another stomp, but I find this one to feel much more powerful for some reason. Everything Wii Fit does is just automatically funny, so there's that as well. Like Incineroar's though, she does have other spikes, which brings this one down to 53. The final move in this tier is Byleth's down air. This is the strongest spike in the game, killing at ridiculously early percents. This move clearly has the power behind it, but I just think it's a bit too slow for me to enjoy using it all that much. Still though, it's a good spike, so it'll take 52. Starting off the high mid tier, we have the only move where its placement was affected by its name. Yoshi's forward air is called, by the game, the Noggin Dunk. How could you not think that's the greatest name ever created for a spike? The name is just hilarious, and on top of that, it's a pretty fun move to use as well. I'm a really big fan of the spikes that swing something forward, whether it be a sword, fist, or their noggin in this case, in order to spike their opponent. They just feel really satisfying to use, and this move is no exception. I will say, though, that it does feel slightly inconsistent to me at times, but in all honesty, it's just a fun move, so it'll take 51. Joker's down air is super strong and a very satisfying one to land a hit with. The only real flaw is that it's only available when Arsene is out, but I think that was a good way to balance this. So for that, it'll take 50. Link's down air downward thrust is a really fun one to go for. If you hit it, Link will bounce off of his opponent and likely be able to survive. But if you miss, you will have a harder time getting back. I really like the moves that act like this, as they allow you to use them more freely than the stall and falls that are almost a guaranteed death sentence. I also find the animation kind of funny as well, so this will take 49. Next we have our three fighting game characters, Ryu's down air, Ken's down air, and Terry's down air. These all send at a really unique diagonal angle, but I think it makes these look a lot cooler. These are fairly difficult to hit, but I think they're pretty hype when you land them. I'll just rank them in order of which characters I like better, so Ryu's Straight Punch will take 48, Ken's will take 47, and Terry's Down Air will take 46. Alright, I'll be honest, I think I might have placed this next one a bit too high, but in my defense, there's really no way to tell where I should place this. This Meteor Smash is by far the most specific one in the game, and it's also the only up air to spike. This move is Mega Man's up air after it's been reflected. This one is just so incredibly specific and will probably never happen. But if it ever does, it would be the craziest thing ever. I mean, everything would just have to line up perfectly for this to even ever happen, so I can't realistically place it any higher than 45, even though I really want to. Now on to one that can actually realistically happen, we have Wii Fit Trainer's side special header. Basically, her headbutt is able to spike, however, this is extremely difficult to hit due to the ball being in the way. However, when you do land it, especially if you have deep breathing, there's no other way it can describe its knockback other than pure violence. I can't really place it much higher because of how hard it is to land that spike hitbox, but that knockback angle was just able to move it really high up to number 44. Next up are the rats, Pikachu and Pichu's down air's electric screw. This is an incredibly good spike, not really that surprising for the best character in the game. This is almost bordering on too easy to hit, but I just can't help myself, this move is way too fun to throw around. I'll be putting Pikachu's at 43 since I think we can all agree, Pichu is just way cooler. That's why he's gonna get 42. Chrome's up special Soaring Slash is infamous for stealing stocks, but also not being a very helpful recovery move. Ike's up special Ether is known for being stupid strong after getting buffed, and that makes it a lot of fun to go for. These are both fairly difficult to hit with offstage to get a kill, and you won't usually survive if you go for them, but they're still really fun. 
I'm putting Krom soaring slash at 41 because Ikes is super fun to use on stage, and of course, who could forget him yelling ether? So that puts it at 40. Two links down are Sword Plants is a stall and fall where he'll stab downward with a spike hitbox at the start of the move. This one is a lot of fun to go for compared to some of the earlier stall and falls I mentioned before because Toon Link can actually save himself using bombs. Meaning that if you're really good, you can recover after the spike, which makes this look super sick. This was originally a bit higher, but then I experienced this while getting footage and immediately moved it down a few spots. <laughs> so for that, it'll take number 39. And now we have our first example of character bias. If you all didn't know, I play Kirby, Mario, Steve, and Young Link. Luckily, Young Link doesn't have any spikes, so he doesn't matter for this video. Just know that the spikes belonging to these three characters may be a bit higher than they should be. I tried my best to compensate for my bias, which may have actually made me place them lower than they should be, but whatever, let's just jump into it here. Kirby's down air aerial spin kick is a move I love a ton. It's pretty easy to hit against most recoveries and is very satisfying as well. It's also great to use on stage, but again, we're not talking about those uses here. I especially love catching teleport recoveries with this since it makes edge guarding against those characters way easier. The only slightly bad thing about this is that it's a pretty weak spike, but it's one that you can use back to back a lot, which makes it really fun for me. I originally had it much, much higher, but decided to move it down a lot because of that character bias, and I might have actually went a bit too far, but it'll take number 38. Snake's forward air is another one of the swinging something down to spike moves. In this case, he uses his leg, which is really cool. The only downside is that I really hate how Snake moves in the air. I just can't stand it, which makes this move really hard for me to use, but it's really exciting when it does get landed, giving it 37. Bowser's down special Bowser Bomb is an incredibly iconic and deadly move. The spike is incredibly strong, and the only real criticism I have over the move is that I feel like the spike hitbox should last for a bit longer. Other than that though, this is a great one, putting it at 36. Greninja's down air works a lot like Link's, where if he hits the opponent, he'll bounce off and can recover. The reason I like this one more, though, is because it's way riskier to go for, since it's an actual stall and fall, meaning that if you miss it, you're pretty much dead. This makes using it much more exciting, in my opinion, and the bouncing off adds a lot to making stall and falls much more fun to go for. It could be a slight bit stronger, but I like it, so that'll take number 35. Donkey Kong's down air aerial foot stomp looks extremely crushing, and you really feel the power behind this move. I think they did an excellent job animating this one, putting it at 34. Ganondorf's down special wizard's foot is a brutal stall and fall. Unlike Greninja's, he will not bounce off the opponent after doing this, however, the power and the visuals with the purple fire just make this move look so good. It's incredibly risky to go for, but it's super satisfying to hit, giving it 33. Terry's down special power dunk is very interesting because it only spikes when you do the command input version of the move. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of command inputs, but I do think that making the spike exclusive to them is a really neat idea. It means that more skill is required to hit it, which is much more exciting. The spike is pretty powerful as well, but since I'm just not quite used to command inputs, I'll be placing it at 32. And now, our final spike in high mid-tier is Ice Climber's forward air hammer slam. This one is really unique because only Nana can do the spike, not Popo. This means that it's much more difficult to hit, but much more hype when it does. It's also another swing something forward move, so it has that going for it as well. The only reason it isn't higher is for similar reason as Snake, I just don't like how they control in the air. I know it's supposed to replicate their air movement in the original Ice Climber, which it does a great job of, but I'm just not personally a fan, putting this at 31. Also while editing this video, I found the visual for the hitbox and um... And now we're on to the penultimate section, high tier. Kicking this off, we have Greninja's down special substitute. If you didn't know, Greninja is actually able to control which direction he flies in from after getting hit. This means that if you get hit and go straight down, the opponent will receive a brutal spike, alongside Greninja's own likely death. I really like how this one won't kill Greninja if he goes for it and misses, but it will if it actually hits. I just think that's a really interesting dynamic that's exclusive to this move. He's not guaranteed to die, of course, but it's very hard to come back. The only reason this isn't higher is because it's basically useless in some matchups since not every recovery has a hitbox. But it's still incredibly fun to use, putting it at 30. Robin's up special Elwind is also another pretty unique one. You have to be right next to your opponent at the start of the move, which is very difficult to land, but when it does, it just looks so cool. I have a lot of fun trying to hit this. It's a bit too hard for it to go any higher, but it still belongs at at least number 29. Bowser's down air Koopa Shell Slam is another stall and fall, and this one may be a bit weird, but I personally love this move. 
I think what sets it apart from the others is just how Bowser kind of moves upwards before going straight down. I don't know why, but that just makes this move feel much better and more fun to risk going for. It again only hits on the startup, but the spike window feels much better than his down special does, so it'll take number 28. Incineroar's up special is stupid, and I love it. I'm pretty sure this also has set knockback like some of the ones in bottom tier, but the difference is, this knockback is actually insane. This will kill at any percent, which makes it super dangerous, but also kind of fun to go for. I just really enjoy using this move. It will also kill Incineroar more often than not, but I'd say it's still dumb and funny, so it takes 27. Ness's down air downward kick has always felt super powerful to me. I think the animation and startup of this move do a great job of selling its impact. All of that combined makes this move feel very satisfying to land, giving it 26. King Dedede's up special Super Dedede Jump is pretty much what I wanted Bowser's down special to be. It has a spike hitbox for the entirety of its descent, which makes it really entertaining to try and land. The only thing I don't like about this move is that its movement when I'm controlling where I want it to ground pound is very wonky. It almost never goes where I want to unless I'm literally not moving horizontally at all. Like, you'll stop moving the control stick and it'll still keep moving horizontally, and I have no idea how to control this well. Still though, it's a great spike giving it 25. Mega Man's down air is a lot of fun due to it being a projectile. This makes it super unique and also incredibly fun to try and throw out. I can't think of a single time I haven't tried going for this move when I play as Mega Man. Not that I play as Mega Man much though, he's kind of a weird character, but anyways, this move does have a slight bit more startup for my liking, but I still enjoy using it, so it'll take 24. Uh oh, it's time for some character bias. This time it's Steve's forward air pickaxe attack. Let me just say, I was so happy when I saw Steve had a spike, and not only that, it's a really neat one as well. It's another swinging something forward one, but this one is super quick. It is a bit weaker than some of the others, but I think the speed more than makes up for that. Plus, it being weaker lets it combo on stage for longer, and I love my Steve combos. Even though I am biased, I still think this would be about where other people would put it, since it's just a funny looking move. But yes, this move will take 23. Simon and Richter's down airs are the final two stolen falls that bounce off of the opponent. I like these more than Greninja because I like the angle that they fly in better, and the animation just makes this move look way cooler and more powerful. I definitely go for this one way more than I should, but I greatly enjoy using it. Simon's will go a 22nd because Richter will always be better than Simon, so this will take 21. Seriously though, if you prefer Simon over Richter, what is wrong with you? Cloud's forward air meteor slash is by far his best spike. The way he swings his sword forward just makes this feel crushing with that little bit of startup. The only reason it didn't make it to the top 10 is because I feel like its meteor hitbox should be there just for a few more frames. Other than that though, this is an incredible spike to kick off the top 20. The first of Captain Falcon's three spikes is his up tilt wheel kick. He's the only character to appear multiple times in this top 20, but he absolutely deserves it as each of his spikes are super hype. I love using this one and it may even be my favorite to land of the three. The only thing holding it back is that it's pretty easy to avoid it if you recover low. But if you are able to land it, the move feels super good, so it'll take number 19. Wii Fit Trainer's forward air single leg extension is a very unique meteor smash. At first glance, this move doesn't seem like one that would actually spike, however her back foot will actually spike the opponent if it lands. Since the hitbox is only on her back foot, it makes it extremely difficult, but that's what makes it fun. Wii Fit has access to a really easy spike in comparison with her down air, which means that if she goes for this instead and lands it, it'll be incredibly hype, so I'm putting this at 18. Mewtwo's down air psychic flip is one I feel like I might be a bit biased, but I just really love the animation on this move. It makes it feel really powerful, which in turn makes it even more exciting. I'm sure others would place this a bit lower, but I don't know, the animation just really sells this for me, putting it at 17. 
Pikachu and Pichu's down specials Thunder are extremely difficult moves to land off stage. If you do it wrong, the rats will just go flying away into the blast zone, which gives this a good risk factor. If you hit the spike on Thunder, then it will either kill the opponent or send them right into you for a powerful blast to KO them since you're already so close to the blast zone. So while it is pretty hard to hit, the reward makes this feel a lot more fun going for, so I'm going to be putting Pikachu's at 16 and Pichu's at 15. Me Gunner's up special cannon jump kick is the definition of a fun move. It might be their worst up special because it barely helps recovering, but it more than makes up for that in its attacking powers. The spike hitbox on this explosion is deceptively massive, even being able to hit below the ledge while standing on stage. There's really not many more things more satisfying than running off as sands and blasting an explosion in your opponent's face before making it back yourself. I just really love this move to the point where I'll never select a different up special for me Gunner, placing this at 14. Donkey Kong's final spike for this video is his forward air aerial roll punch. This move just feels so strong. Alongside it being another swing spike, I just had to place it as his best one. Sure, down air is also really good, but come on. This one is just way more cool to see, putting this at number 13. Character bias time again, it's Kirby's up special final cutter. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. Why on earth is this so much higher than Ether or whatever Kroms is, nobody really cares what it's called. Well I'll tell you, it's just because I find this one way easier to actually spike people hanging on the ledge. Seriously, I can't get Ikes or Kroms to work even close to as well as Kirby's. Kirby also has multiple jumps, which means he's able to time when to activate this way easier, which for me makes it more fun to go for. It's honestly one of my favorite tools of his, you can almost always drop down and down air them to finish them off if they didn't die as well. I also like baiting people to come off stage to edge guard me before hitting them with a reversal with this move spike. I just think this type of move works best on Kirby, so I'm going to be putting this at 12th. And for our final spike of high tier, we have Captain Falcon's side special, Raptor Boost. This one kind of works like stall and falls that bounce off of people that we've seen before. Instead of going down though, this will move sideways, and if you miss, you'll enter freefall. This gives this move a big risk factor, but also additional utility as it can help you recover from down low if your opponent is there as well. My favorite way to use this move though is to bait people into making them try to edge guard me, much like Kirby's. So for all of this, it'll take number 11. But before we get into our top tier though, I think we should pay respects for the very few characters that don't have a single Meteor Smash. Anyways, enough of those lame characters, it's time to look at some top tiers. Starting us off, we have Rob's Down Air. This is the best use of startup lag of any move in the game in my opinion. While it does take quite a long time for him to activate it, that's what makes this move have so much power behind it. The difficulty of this move due to that startup just makes the hype even more extreme. Had this move been really fast on startup, I actually think it would be lower on the list. But the way it is now just makes this a masterpiece, putting it at number 10. Now we have one of the very, very few taunts to have a hitbox, and the only one to Meteor Smash, Luigi's Down Taunt. This one has a large amount of startup, but what makes this really unique is just how deadly the spike is. If you're ever hit by this offstage, you're immediately dead. This is one of the most difficult to hit spikes in the game though, only having just a few active frames and an incredibly small hitbox. All of that though just makes this move even more exciting. It being a taunt fits this move incredibly well because it's pretty much just pure disrespect. While it's too hard for me to put it any higher, this may be one of the most hype spikes in the franchise, putting it at number 9. Lucas's back air PK meteor kick is just a stylish move. Perfect difficulty where it's still challenging, but not too hard to hit. The effects on Lucas's foot and the flip that he does makes this move even more hype. I might be a bit biased here, but I think it looks really cool, so it'll take number 8. Now we have the holy trinity of stomps. Those are Captain Falcon's down air, Dr. Mario's down air, and Ganondorf's down air. These three stick out from the rest as being the perfect interpretations of this style of move. The way they're each animated makes them feel powerful and they devastate anyone who gets hit by them. Looking at them separately, Dr. Mario's face when he uses his is just hilarious. This move is new to Ultimate and when I first saw it in Dr. Mario's trailer, I was super hyped and I believe it completely lived up to my expectations. Its name is also hilarious, just being clear in all caps, which is just fantastic giving this 7th. Captain Falcon's stomp is just iconic and very difficult to beat. It just fits him so perfectly and I can't imagine any other character pulling it off better than him, giving this 6th. 
Well, that's sort of a lie because Falcon's old semi-clone Ganon has the best stomp in the game. Its power is unpar was unparalleled, and if you get hit by it, you're basically done for. The electricity at Ganon's feet just adds to how crushing this truly is, and it makes the screen pause on the move just that little bit longer to let it set in before your opponent vanishes into the void. I can't see this possibly being any lower than number 5. Moving from the best stomp in the game to the by far best stall and fall, we have Sephiroth's down air. This move is already iconic before coming into Smash, as it's part of a very iconic scene in Final Fantasy VII, possibly one of the most iconic scenes in gaming. This meant that there was no other choice for his down air, and I think it lived up to what it is perfectly. His sword is so long that it can be seen going far below the ledge, making it a very fun one to try and time. It's a slight bit tight, but if you get it, it's pure destruction, giving this an easy number 4 spot. Now then, this top 3 is incredibly close, to the point where each of these are pretty much interchangeable. Starting off with what I think might be the most hype spike in the game, Wolf side special, Wolf Flash. Wolf is already one of the coolest looking characters in the game due to his unique purple effects added to his claws. These effects are at their highest in his side special, where if you hit the sweet spot, the opponent will be brutally murdered. This is visually one of the best looking moves in the entire game, but it is unfortunately very difficult to hit, and Wolf will certainly die if he goes for it since it will send him into freefall. All of that though just adds to its hype, because if you ever land this move, especially in a last stock situation, I genuinely can't think of anything more hype than that. I can't give it number 1 since it's just too hard to land, but the sheer amount of hype this move generates easily brings it up to number 3. King K. Rool's back air is pure violence and is so incredibly strong. This is perfectly animated to show just how brutal this spike really is and you feel every ounce of that power when using it. This basically makes his down air completely worthless just due to this one being much more fun to go for. It is on the easier side to hit, definitely compared to Wolf's, but it's still incredibly hype, which is why this is going at number 2. But, the title of the best Meteor Smash in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, in my opinion, belongs to Mario's forward air, the Meteor Knuckle. There aren't many moves more fun to go for than this one. The spike Mario hits you with is super strong, and the animation does a great job selling that impact as well. Mario's incredible combo game also lets this move become a finisher for a really long string of moves, which makes it even more hype. Many other spikes don't have that combo luxury, but that's not even the end of Mario's Meteor Knuckle. The timing for actually getting the spike feels perfect, which goes a long way in making this move feel more exciting. It's also really fun to do a turnaround and spike anyone trying to go for the ledge, as many don't expect it to be reversed. There's a reason Mario mains throw this move out way more than they should. Just like other moves like Falcon Punch, this is just way too hype to ignore. Unlike Falcon Punch though, this is an actually really good move, and while I am probably just incredibly biased as Mario is one of my mains, I couldn't bring myself to place Mario's Meteor Knuckle any lower than the number one spot. Its animation, power, and timing are all just too perfect to ignore. In my opinion, this is well deserving of the title of the best spike in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. But anyways, that's it for this very long video. Were you all happy that I beat up that monstrosity known as Tennessee the whole video? Let me know in the comments. I worked really hard on the presentation for this one, which took a really long time, but I do think it'll make the video look a lot nicer. Also, I know it's been a while since my last upload, but I got really busy over these last few weeks, so please forgive me for that. Hopefully, I should be right back to making videos on a somewhat weekly basis now. If you enjoyed this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you gave it a like and subscribe to the channel. This is one of my favorite videos I made just due to the presentation alone. These title cards that I had for each move took a really long time to make, but I feel like they were worth it. Anyways, try Bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.